We are still at the Nordic stand and I am still with Robin and we are about to talk about the MPM 1300 PMIC which is their power management IC. Uh, so before we get into it, um, for uh, folks who are maybe uh, closer to the start of their journey working with development boards, what exactly does a power management IC do? Uh, a power management IC uh, normally handles things like uh, voltage regulation for systems, so uh, ensuring that the sensitive components uh, that can't be connected directly to your lithium ion battery that goes up to like 4.2 volts are getting a stable voltage at 3.3 or 1.8 or whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Uh, it also often includes a battery charger, so ensuring that you can charge those lithium ion batteries uh, safely. Um, and you can also integrate uh, different system management features uh, like USB detection, so you can negotiate the correct power limits. Uh, the NPM 1300 also have a uh, fuel gauging functionality that runs an al uh, a hardware for running an algorithm that uh, runs on your host processor to calculate the state of charge of the battery more accurately. It has hardware reset functionality, which allows this long press to completely reset your system that you know from any modern embedded devices. Yeah. Uh, and all of this we try to integrate into the PMIC because they all handle power in some sort of way. So it would be a true power management IC instead of just a buck regulator or just a battery charge. Yeah, and, that, and that's, a, that's a key point actually because one of the things uh, about the PMIC that is sort of unique is that on most development boards that do have some kind of power management system, you're actually talking about several discrete different components that all come together to do power management. But the PMIC, the MPM 1300 PMIC is a little bit different, isn't it? You've got an example here which kind of shows it quite nicely. <laughs> yeah, so this is the SysWatch. It's an open source uh, smartwatch uh, project. Uh, so in version 4 of the, their design, they had uh, distributed power management, so multiple uh, discrete power management components, buck converters, the battery charger, all uh, spread out over the board, which allowed them to, well, which didn't allow them to integrate a lot of features that would require PCB space. So, for example, you don't have uh, a microphone or a buzzer on the old version because of the power management taking all the place. For version five, they replaced all those power management components with the NPM 1300 and that allowed them to integrate more features into the PCB design on the same space. Absolutely, and um, um, we'll cut in some B-roll of it as well. There's another really nice little example here um, of the difference between PCB size between the two. Um, so the, there's obviously some advantages to doing all of this in one chip, um, but given that this is something, you mentioned earlier, this is something that connects via I2C to a host processor, um, and if someone wanted to get started with it, is there an easy way to evaluate how it works and then set it up for use in a project? Yeah, so we realized that a lot of the people who are using PMIX or get their responsibility for power management in uh, embedded systems are actually the hardware designers. And the hardware designers, they don't love uh, uh, firmware development or programming as much and they might not even enjoy reading the data sheets all the time uh, because they can be a little bit convoluted with a lot of uh, registers that you need to keep track of and stuff so uh, we actually made our development kit such that it has a graphical user interface that runs on a PC so on the NPM 1300 uh, evol uh, evaluation kit here we have a NRF 5340 SOC that is running sort of a translation layer between USB and I2C. So in the graphical user interface on the PC, you are uh, using this NRF 5340 to translate the, the data from the PMIC and to the PMIC uh, into the PC. So in this uh, software, which is called NPM Power Up, uh, you can set all the selectable settings of the NPM 1300 PMIC. You can enable charging, you can change the voltage of the buck regulators, you can switch on and off the load switches, uh, you have more advanced settings for all of these as well. Uh, you can set up your GPIOs, which the PMIC also have, and you can look at the uh, different and enable the different uh, system management features like hardware reset, chip mode, uh, boot timer, power failure readout and it also has this uh, fuel gauging hardware for fuel gauging so estimating estimating the uh, state of charge of your connected battery uh, so here we have actually a 200 milliamp hour battery connected and you can see that it's the fuel gauging algorithm that's running on the NRF 5340 SOC uh, by using the data from the thingy 53 estimates that it has 210 hours of uh, battery life left at its current voltage and with the current 
current draw that it's uh, using right now. Absolutely, and, uh, and the beauty of this obviously is that you can evaluate what you wanted to do with a graphical user interface. But um, uh, as we talked about at length with, uh, with Nordic stuff, it's all based on Zephyr. The NRF Connect SDK is essentially, is it, it's fair to say it's essentially Zephyr with extra bits on top, right? Um, and uh, the beauty of this is that once you've set all of this up, you showed me just before that you can export this out and it becomes a config layer that you can include in a Zephyr project, meaning that you don't really need to touch your production code at all. Yeah, once you set all your settings in the uh, NPM Power Up app, you just click on Export Configuration and it will generate a Zephyr overlay file. Yeah. So without touching your original project, to add the NPM 1300 into that firmware is just to export this uh, overlay file from NPM Power Up yeah. and, and add it as an overlay file in your Zephyr project. And that's it. Uh, you have to do some uh, extra uh, defines and includes on the RSF in the start of your uh, code, but most of the legwork is done by the over overlay here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I have since the last time we have met, I've definitely become one of the people who is. Uh, I, I have definitely become one of the people who is into the idea of Zephyr. Um, it's very complicated to get your head around, but all of the config and uh, all of the config stuff that happens on boot is really, really useful once you once you learn how to use it. It is quite complicated for a non-engineer like me. Um, but yeah, um, we've gone from uh, what is a power manager to an incredibly uh, fully featured GUI that can export into a, a, a NRF. A Connect project or a Zephyr project very easily. Is there anything else you want to add to this, Robin? Uh, no, uh, I could probably elaborate a little bit on the fuel gauging. So that is actually that is quite an interesting uh, 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 prospect because fuel gauging batteries isn't as simple as it sounds it should be. And I know it's actually quite hard to estimate the full charge of a battery. So what have, what have Nordic put in place in order to give a, a relatively accurate uh, fuel gauge measurement? Yeah. So a pretty standard way of way of doing this is doing this is just like. Uh, reading out the open circuit voltage so the unloaded voltage of the battery mm -hmm. and then just like correlating this amount of voltage to about this state of charge mm -hmm. unfortunately this varies with temperature mm -hmm. and also the discharge curve for lithium-ion batteries is very flat mm -hmm. so you actually have to make very accurate measurements but because it varies with temperature the accuracy of the measurements are distorted by the temperature changes uh, so another way of doing this is actually using uh, uh, dedicated fuel gauge ICs uh, that uses processing to uh, correlate temperature and voltage and current draw at the same time. Uh, so the NPM 1300 doesn't have an internal processor, but it has the hardware that it needs to send to this processor. Yeah. So what we've done is that we've made uh, in NPM PowerUp actually uh, an automatic uh, battery model generator. So you generate a model of your battery that you can put into your Zephyr project again mm -hmm. and it actually will pull off the relevant data from the PMIC and do accurate algorithm based fuel gauging on the SOC that's close to it, yeah. uh, integrated in the PMIC and not as a separate uh, IC as yeah. normally. And also this tuning that I mentioned is done by you yourself in your lab. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of the fuel gauge IC manufacturers, they sell this tuning service as a service, whereas Nordic, we sell an add-on board to the NPM 1300EK, which is called the NPM fuel gauge board, which allows you to create this algorithm or the model of the battery yourself in your own lab. Okay. Oh, that's that's super interesting. So, I mean, if it comes to um, if it comes to wanting to use either the NPM 1300 or the NPM uh, fuel gauge, if people want to get started with that today, where's the best place for them to look? I think you should look at the nordicsemi.com slash npm1300. Okay. I think that's a good starting point. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you once again for your time today, Robin. And yeah, the uh, PMIX seems like a wonderful solution if you want a single chip to take care of pretty much all of your power needs. And the NPM fuel gauge is something we'll be talking about in the future as well. Links to all of this in the description of the video on the blog post. Uh, yeah. Thanks once again. Thank you.